Hey, thanks for joining us on today's Infinity Matrix live stream. Please consider this our gift to you as an exploration into the spiritual realm, the universal architecture of infinite possibilities. Here we teach, explore, experiment in order to share with you the secrets of the universe and its abundance of life-changing knowledge. Please remember to click subscribe and ring that bell to stay up to date with all of our continuing content. We titled this live stream Decoding the Hidden Secrets for a Blissful Life. And we did that for a reason. You're living a code now. We all do. Each of us learning, living, detecting the patterns in the matrix. They're there, all around us, weaving, bending, changing, while still remaining always consistent and persistent. They were created and exist for a reason, to protect you, to feed you, to make life easier in providing all basic functions of living that you or someone created them for, programmed them for, or designed them for. And what we want is to help reveal that code, your code, and if needed, change, modify, or rewrite that code to produce the blissful life you've always wanted. You think and say you want to be happy and joyful, but your life's patterns show otherwise. Your code says otherwise. It simply says, mm, no, I was created to produce a different outcome. And it will, it's very consistent and it's very persistent in repeating that. Now, this will better allow you to make better choices for the path of your journey. In past live streams on this topic, I've shown you some amazing research that has proved how your environment influences your perception of reality, further exemplifying that epigenetics is real and provable. And this was, God, Gary, when was this? This is way back in ep episode four? And then I think we did another follow-up on that on episode 75. So the thing about the internal and external aspects of the infinity matrix is that successes and failures both leave clues, patterns, patterns to be reviewed, interpreted, and decoded. What worked? What didn't work? But if you're not able to uncover those clues, or even want to, then you're at the mercy of those who can and who do. So here it is. Um, so here's what, here's what we, you, have power over your life. And they are the things that come from inside you, your internal matrix. They include thoughts and behaviors and feelings. And once you can manage them effectively, you will quickly achieve any goals that you have for your life. For you to gain this level of control, you must be aware of the scientific patterns behind your thoughts and emotions and know how to control or, for that matter, direct them. Because once you are aware of how your mind works, you can intentionally influence the patterns in your life. You can also be better at evaluating the realities of your life, make better decisions, and enhance your capacity for achieving the goals that you set out to achieve. So by doing this, you can conclusively determine, control, and improve the quality of your life and the thinking systems. So how does the mind work? Well, from a general view, you have two systems of thinking, the autopilot and the intentional system. That's what we're going to call them for, for simplicity's sake. The autopilot is, is run mainly by your intuitions 
and emotions. It depends on the cognitive processes that happen in the uh, uh, amygdala, those which also help make us quick, make quick decisions and reflexes, especially in life and death situations. This is also the system that determines your daily automated habits. Since there are not many life and death stressors lying around like, like nature and like uh, our, our history has had in the past, the autopilot system treats even the small stressors as such. This causes an unnecessary stressful daily life experience that undermines a person's health and physical well-being. You've heard us talk about this before as well. Additionally, although the quick judgments we make based on emotions and feelings could feel right, they often lead people to the wrong, predictable, systematic ways. The intentional system is driven by rational thinking and its processes are conducted on the, in, the, in the prefrontal cortex. This thinking system gives you the ability to handle complex mental activities, like handling group and individual relationships, uh, problemistic thinking, reasoning logically, and learning new behavioral patterns. So what does that tell you? It means that right now you're using your prefrontal cortex. So while the automatic system does not require any conscious effort, the intentional system requires your effort to function. However, with the training that occurs as a person grows and the motivation to gravitate towards right systems of behavior, courtesy of the positive payoffs, the intentional system is ideal for situations when the autopilot fails or is likely to lead to mistakes. In most of life circumstances, you will find that you need the intentional system better than autopilot because your system will rarely want to do the right things. That's where I'm saying, I just run my program. That's not what I was created for. And it runs over and over again. I wanna go right, nope, we're going left. You will not want to work hard or wake up early to save money or to do any of the other similar things. Your body continually seeks comfort, but comfort discourages growth. Anyone recognizing your patterns yet or patterns of people around you? As you run on both autopilot and intentional systems, you are likely to develop patterns of behavior. Understanding yourself will require you to follow these behavior patterns so that you know when and how to intervene in them. So although the concept of recognizing patterns is as simple as, as we say, um, the intricacies are a little bit more complicated than that. One of their earliest patterns a human being takes on his knowledge is, is on his knowledge of language structure. And from there, the sequence of learning and adopting behavior in your life happens in the same stages. First, you establish the meaning of a particular occurrence. Second, you determine how different contexts can change the meaning of the event. And thirdly, you determine what a repeat of the incident could elicit from you in terms of the action that you should take. This entire process is what leads to the development of behavior and event happens, you, uh, happens that you determine what you would mean in different contexts. And then you figure it out and, and what you're gonna do about it. Discovering your patterns of behavior in most cases requires pretty much a second party, like a coach or a therapist, to ask questions that are intended to discover various patterns in your life, of which you might not be have the knowledge for. Now, a perfect example of this is getting on our call, our VIP call, right after, after this. 
where we hashtag can... bliss if you want to get on the, the link for that or hashtag bliss. Exactly. So, for example, you might go uh, um, to this person seeking help for your anxiety and stress issues, but the anxiety is only a symptom, and you need to get to the root of it to solve it. This is the reason patterns are a great help. Following one will take you straight to the source of the problem. I'm going to say this again. This is the reason that patterns are such a great help and an asset. Because following a pattern will take you straight to the source of the problem. And as you can see, the questions that you are asked provide a starting point that will eventually lead you to that root cause so that you can understand behavior and its origins with the options of making adjustments to cause behavior change. So understanding the negative behavior patterns, it's easy to become hooked up into this, this behavior pattern that provides a psychological payoff or a payoff of, of some other kind, okay? Even though, it has many, if not some downsides. So the way we overcome particular behaviors is to understand the psychological payoffs associated with each. Once you know this, you will be more effective in handling this situation by establishing the psychological needs entangled in there and finding an alternative way of meeting these needs. Gary tells these stories all the time when he had his hypnosis clinics. So that's, that's all he was dealing with. Was what's the end result? Where did it start? Some of the payoffs you are likely to seek in, in different habits and behavior include emotional payoffs and unwanted behavior comes with both positive and negative emotional payoffs. So to sum up, direct behavior often leading to tangible results because it inspires people to bring up opportunities and threats that could impact a team's performance. However, when overly done, the direct approach could easily spill over into rudeness and insensitivity. And on the other hand, indirect behavior is more passive and it helps maintain peace between individuals but it does kind of slow things down just a little bit, but it is generally the strongest and the best direction to go. So um, I noticed that uh, Melanie had asked for us to talk about the third, because um, you talked the first one was establishing meaning of a particular occurrence. Then second, you determine how um, different contexts can change the meaning of the event. And then third, you determine what a repeat of that incident could elicit for you in terms of you know the actions you should or shouldn't take. So that's the third one. So now I need to ask about that. Cool. Um, okay. So all behavior is a pattern. Okay, it's a pattern that was created and reinforced either by you or someone else, and and the art of pattern detection is going to be the key to decoding all the hidden secrets for the blissful life that you desire. It's such an important skill set. Uh, like I said, it's, it, it, but it's overlooked and definitely not emphasized enough um, as we go through, because we just fall into the path. We just, we, we fall into the mentality of, oh, well, that's just what I do, or that's just how things are, or those kinds of things to kind of take away from our power to look at the pattern and also make it a, a, a change in it. So um, when, when, you, when you can become aware of the patterns that make your life happy and the patterns that send you into spirals of negativity, you become empowered. And I think that if you're, uh, if, if people, are so caught up in the stresses and the anxieties and the and the TVs and the and the social media and they're caught up in all those things. 
it doesn't allow them to really have that reflection on things that matter, right? And, and the things that matter is looking at what are the patterns that are showing up or the, the patterns that are, are, are presenting the reality that you're experiencing. And if there's things you enjoy, then, then, and you find those patterns, then you can duplicate those patterns to get more of that. And if there's things you don't enjoy, you can look at the pattern and then you can, you can start to experiment with the different aspects of the pattern to, to get a different outcome, right? So um, you become empowered with the ability to decide which patterns you invest more time and energy into. You literally will have, you will have the control pad of your life at your fingertips right? The control pad for the life that you want. So in order for you to find patterns, you need to understand the structure of what you're searching for. And there are very specific elements that make up a pattern. Something just, something can't just happen once because then it's not considered a pattern right? If something happens twice, it has the potential of being a pattern, but also has the potential of that second time being a fluke, okay? If something happens three times, then it has the foundation of being a pattern because you have a beginning, you have a middle reference point, and a progression towards the next element in the pattern. So I'm gonna to go to the screen share here, one second. Let's do that screen share. All right. So let's say that, um, there we go. If I say to you, capital A, right? The information you have is that there's an alphabet, if you're familiar with the alphabet, and it's the beginning of the English alphabet. It's the capital letter in that alphabet, right? That's the information you're presented with here. But if I ask you to tell me what comes next, okay, um, well, let's, let's see. What comes next? If I show you this and, I, and, and we're trying to, you know, determine the pattern, what comes next? Tell me in the comments, what do you think comes next? I know. I know. This is the information you've been given. and all that you have as a reference. What comes next? Some of you guys are wondering, right? I mean, this, and, and the, here's the thing is that the reason it's hard for you to come up with an idea or to be certain of your idea is because you are left with an infinite number of possibilities which could be right or wrong. So what you have here is not enough info. Exactly, Josephine, you need more info, right? So if I, and, and because it, it doesn't demonstrate enough of a pattern yet, okay? So if I say capital A, capital B, now you have more info to piece together, right? So things you can look for that are consistent is, hey, it's still the English alphabet. Again, if you're familiar with the English alphabet, it's still progressing from the beginning. So it's, it's moving from one to the next in that alphabet sequence. And it's progressing by one at a time. So I'm not skipping letters yet, or if I'm going to, I don't know. 
right? <laughs> Good for you, Melanie. Yeah, exactly. And then they're still both capitals. Okay, so those are variables that we know we can look at our formulation of a potential pattern. So some of you already responded. If I ask you to tell what comes next, then you have an idea where it's going and could probably deduce a more likely option for what's next. But we until we get that third piece, it, it's, it's still up in the air, right? So um, go ahead and post what you think the next one. So uh, Melanie says next could be C. Um, if you're spelling a word, it's not enough information. Absolutely, right? So if I say capital A, B, C, the probability of the next sequence gets much more narrow, correct? Yeah, there you go, Joan. But only because um, that's one option, Joan. It could have been anything else, right? It, so there was no certainty that C was there. But now that you have ABC, right, you've got a formulation of a pattern, something that happened once, something that, that, that um, happened again with similar consistencies that led you in the direction to say, hey, there's a possible pattern. And then a third thing that confirmed that, that says, oh yeah, okay, I can see that now there's, uh, it's definitely alphabet, they're all gonna be caps, at least for now. And so the probability of the next thing in the sequence is increased when we get that information. But we need a minimum of three. Maximum doesn't, there's no end to that, okay? So think of it this way. Once means it could just be by chance, right? It's just random, right? Uh, twice means it could be coincident. But the third time, you have the foundation for a pattern. And you have to look for the consistent thread that holds the pattern together. So then you see there's the pattern. Okay? Now, um, how does this relate to you and your blissful life? If we look at, uh, if, if, you, if you start to look at your, your life experience, and let's say today is an exceptionally great day for you. If you don't look at the patterns that created that, your chance of duplicating them are just based on um, luck by chance. Right, it's you may fall into that pattern again. You may fall into that routine, but there's no guarantee on that. But if you know the pattern that says, when I wake up, if I do a, a you know a morning routine and I say certain things and um, I do certain actions, then that spark that spurs a sequence of patterns that are going to put me in a better state of being. So now I can duplicate that so that I get better at refining that, improving that, and having that more by choice. If you find that you're, you're, you're consistently in, uh, you know, let's say you're at work and you consistently find that there's less than positive emotions that you're feeling. If you don't look at what the patterns are that are creating that, they'll continue to run the show because you're, you're, you're allowing just the, that, that um, those outside forces that have locked into that pattern, whatever it is, to just take over an autopilot, right? This is where we say autopilot is good for your heartbeat. <laughs> it's good for the functioning of your um, the, the organs and the systems of your body. But when you want to have choice and control of your life, you want to know what's going on and make sure the things that are on autopilot are the things that are serving you. And they're, they're by your choice, not someone else's choice. Okay, so let's have a little fun here today. Um, I need you to participate for this next little bit. I'm going to give you a set of information. 
that information is going to is is I want you to take that information and establish. Uh, I'm going to establish a pattern, and I want you to tell me what the next element in the pattern is by posting your answers when you have it. Some of you have seen me do these demonstrations in previous streams. If so, please hold back on your answers. Let everybody else get a chance to get their aha moments. Um, and if you haven't, play along. It's a lot of fun. It can be frustrating and it can be fun at the same time. Yes, two things can be the truth. Can be true. Okay. Uh, so let me just stop the stream for a second there. Okay. So when you get it, don't tell anyone in the group how you got it, okay? Um, because they need to have the aha moments for themselves. So the first one, um, how can you answer this in the comments? Actually, I'm, I'm gonna skip this second. So, uh, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you a sequence of patterns and they're going to be in clumps. So uh, I'll explain in a second. They're gonna be in clumps. Uh, so there's a certain set of instructions for one and then two and then three and four and so on and so on for in the sequence, okay? You're going to tell me what the next set of sequences, the set of um, responses are. So here's, here's what we're gonna say. First pattern in the sequence, okay? First one is line down, line down, line down. It doesn't, and I'm not saying lying down, okay? <laughs> okay. Line down, line down, line across is the first set, okay? Line down, line down, line across. Okay, I want you to process that. That's the first bit of information. The second, remember we need three pieces for it to be pattern, right? Second piece is line down, uh, half circle, half circle. Okay, so that's the second piece. I'll say it again, line down, half circle, half circle. And then the third piece is half circle. So who can tell me what the fourth piece is gonna be? And I'll repeat them again. First piece, line down, line down, line across. That's one, right? Two in the sequence is line down, half circle, half circle. And then the third in that sequence is half circle. Who can tell me what the next one is gonna be? And I want you to tell me in the format of the same language I'm giving. So you can say it's gonna be, you know, line this, line that, this direction, whatever. Give me the same terminology. Okay. And I'm you know, going to disappoint some of you. I'm actually not going to give you the answer. You need to actually get it. <laughs> and you'll get the aha, and you'll see how sneaky I am when you get it. <laughs> all right. Um, because there have been clues all throughout already that I've been giving you before I actually presented the pattern. All right, so let me add, maybe it's not enough info for you yet, right? Line down, twice half circle. <laughs> okay. So not quite, William. Good attempt, though. Good attempt. All right. So let me give you, and, and really, when you get this, you're going to be like, ah, oh, Gary, really? Okay. So the next one, then. So we have the first one, second one, third one. I'm going to give you the fourth one in the sequence just to help you out. Not quite. Close, Mitch, close, not quite. Okay, 
So the fourth one in sequence is line down half circle. Line down, line across half circle. Nope, not yet. <laughs> nice try, Laura. Okay. So the fourth one is line down, half circle. So I'm going to go through them again. Number one, just to kind of, you, so you can process this here again. So the first one, just in case you're missing up, line down, line down, line across. Okay. Second one, line down, half circle, half circle. Third one, half circle. The fourth one is line down, half circle. And then the next one is line down, line across, line across, line across. Okay. So I know some of your brains are just kind of getting like twisted up right now, right? <laughs> This is, and, and I do this as a demonstration for two reasons. Number one, it starts to train your brain to look for patterns, okay? What could the pattern possibly be? That's the first thing you need to do uh, is to get into that mentality, that mindset. The second thing I want you to understand and get here is that this is just one fun, simple, and it really is a simple pattern. And if in, if in this simple pattern can cause some frustration or confusion or, you know, like, you know, the giving up, oh, I don't want any of that stuff. Think about the complexities of a pattern that goes into creating a behavior, into creating an emotion, into creating a particular result that you want to get in your life, right? But because you haven't worked that muscle of pattern detection, your, your ability to, to look for and, and, and decode those patterns becomes limited. Okay, so I'll give you guys a clue. The clue to the pattern is in the example that I gave before um, before we, we, uh, I started this pattern. So the example that I gave before this is a massive clue. Now, with that in mind, some of you may tr trigger in here. So I'm going to say it again. First one is line down, line down, line across. Second one, line down, half circle, half circle. Third one, half circle. Fourth one, line down, Half circle. And what Jones says, line diagonal. Huh? No, nope, not quite yet. No, diagonal comes a little later. Um, so the fourth one is line down, half circle. Fifth. And then the sixth and final one for today is line down. Which, I mean, there's more, but I'm going to end it at that because once you get it, you'll get the rest of the pattern. Line down line across, line across, All right? So the fifth one is line down, sorry, sixth one, line down, line across, line across. Line down, line across, line across. Yeah, Melanie, that's it. That's the, so Melanie, if you've got it, it sounds like you got it. Why don't you tell me what the next one, uh, it's a, next one's a little trickier to, to do, but, um, see if you can kind of get the next one after. It's a little tricky. It's, it's, it's tricky for a variety of different reasons, but um, number five again. Okay, so number five is line down, line across, line across, line across. Okay, so it's line down with three line across, right? And then the, the sixth one is line down, line across, line across. So only twice. <laughs> yeah, I think you got it, Melanie. Good job. Way to go, girl. Yeah. 
Way to go. All right. And when you get it, you're, you, you need to get the aha moment. So I, so I apologize for not giving you the answer. You need to get the aha moment. The, um, and I'll, so I'm gonna leave you on an easy one to get as far as description wise, um, but, but I'm gonna give you everything up to that one. So uh, I'll give you the first seven and then the eighth one, I'm gonna leave for you to come up with, with that. And, and in the comments, when you feel you have the eighth one, uh, put hashtag got it and then do it so that I can come back and check in and support you with that one on one um, in the comments. OK, so again, last sequence, last time I'm going to go through sequence. Line down, line down, line across. That's the first. Second one, line down, half circle, half circle. Third one is half circle. Fourth one, line down, half circle. Fifth one, line down, line across, line across, line across. Sixth one, line down, line across, line across. Seventh one, and this is the last one I'll give, and then you guys come up with number eight, all right? Seventh one is half circle, line down, line across. Okay. <laughs> All right, come back, come back, Mitch, and uh, and see if you can if it, it pops up for you and let us know um, in the comments. And uh, because again, it's when you get it, it's like a it's like an aha moment that your mind expands in its capacity to find patterns. Okay, so whatever number eight is in that sequence, you can go ahead and let us know in the comments when you get that, or jump on the um, on the Zoom call after this and the implementation call. Let's have a conversation, see if I can give you some more clues. All right. So some of you may need time to come back and replay this until, <laughs> until you get your own aha moment, and that's okay. All right. Hey, way to go, Melanie. Yep, you did it. Um, so uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to leave it to you to pat, you know, figure it out. Uh, you'll kick yourself when you realize how simple and how obvious I was in the clue prior to this pattern, what I was talking about and how I talked about it. And even what I demonstrated on the screen gives you a clue, right? I've probably given you way more clues than I should have already. Uh, so use all of that information in, in your pattern detection work, OK? If you want to join us in the implementation call right after this, talk more about patterns, patterns in your life. Um, maybe even I'll throw in another fun pattern ex example. We'll see who all shows up. Get on, the call, get on the call by dropping hashtag bliss. I'll drop the link. You can jump on the Zoom and join us. <laughs> Joan, no, I can't tell you, Joan. <laughs> Defeats the purpose. You got to really work at it, OK? Jump on the Zoom, or you, or you can even ask questions in the comments. We'll 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 be replying. I'll give you the support you need without giving you the answer, and I've given you a fair amount of clues already. Yeah, Melanie's got it right. The clue provided the context. I mean, I pre-framed it all from that from that initial <laughs> Joan. <laughs> Don't be mad, Joan. Don't be mad. Send love. Send love. <laughs> All right, good. It's worth the wait. Yeah. All right. So next week, we have a really great uh, thing coming. You want to tell them about next week? What's going on next week, Ross? Yeah. So next week, we have got a great interview uh, set up on the uh, uh, Infinite Wisdom uh, interview series. And uh, her name is uh, MK McDaniels. Um, she goes by MK, but her first name is actually Kathy. Um, so she's got an amazing story. So she was hospitalized um, with lung failure back in 1999 and was placed on a ventilator and then put into a drug-induced coma. And, uh, and she had a very, very disturbing near-death experience. And it was very traumatic. And, um, but at the same time, it had what she calls an indescribable bliss 
and uh, it shifted all of her beliefs. Her spiritual beliefs just completely shifted. She wrote a book about it. We're going to have her live next Thursday, and uh, it's going to be really, really cool. And uh, then that's going to kick off uh, four weeks of, uh, of interviews and uh, that we're really excited for, that we've been uh, kind of digging and scouring, trying to find some really interesting uh, people to bring on. And, uh, and that's just gonna be for the month. We're gonna do all of August is gonna be uh, uh, our, our complete uh, in, in infinite wisdom interview series. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. She is the perfect kickoff for this series that's coming up. So we hope to see you all there. And uh, until then, peace, we'll see you. Um, and uh, hopefully some of you will c come on to the, uh, <laughs> the, the private call and, uh, you know, just tell Gary to his face how mad you are. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll just decode the pattern of that anger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so tell me about this. Yeah. All right. <laughs> So that's our stream for every, uh, for this week, everyone. For those of you joining us on implementation call, give us a few minutes to for a water break and, and check our mics and cameras and stuff. We'll be right there for you or with you. Um, remember, it's not live streamed anywhere. It's just us uh, getting together for a chat um, and finding out how you can implement what we're teaching here. Uh, so till next time, we dare you to be exceptional. And the only way to do that is to implement, implement what you learn and learn from what you implement. Be well, everyone. Thanks for showing up and we'll see you next week. Definitely check in because that's going to be a fun, fun, powerful live stream. All right. Have a great one, everyone. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for joining us on today's Infinity Matrix live stream. Please consider this our gift to you as an exploration into the spiritual realm, the universal architecture of infinite possibilities. Here we teach, explore, experiment in order to share with you the secrets of the universe and its abundance of life-changing knowledge. Please remember to click subscribe and ring that bell to stay up to date with all of our continuing content. Hey, thanks for joining us on today's live stream. Please consider this our gift to you, an exploration into the spiritual realm, the universal architecture of infinite possibilities. Here we teach, explore, experiment in order to share the secrets passed down from the masters. They've harnessed their own potential, claimed their badass self, and raise their game and leveled up. Whether it be in business, personal, romantic, for whatever aspect of life you choose, there's always a next level. So we encourage you to rekindle your passion and purpose, step it up and register for our next free five day badass challenge. The link is below and we are excited to see you take a leap into a new reality that only you can imagine.